Hi guys, Sci-Fi Recap here. Before we start, warning. Spoilers ahead. Today, I'm gonna explain an intriguing and mind-blowing science fiction movie from Black Mirror Seasons 3, called Hated in Nation. The movie starts with a journalist, named Joe Powers, walking towards her house when she receives a gift from an unknown. She has recently been subjected to online death threats after she published an article criticizing a disabled activist's suicide. The scene also shows that her room window is left open. Karen Park, a London detective chief inspector, is watching a TV show when suddenly gets a message and directly comes to the crime scene. At there, she meets Blue Coulson and Nick Shelton. Blue is tech-savvy and ATDC, the most junior British police officer in the criminal investigation department. And Nick is a police officer that works under Karen's instruction. Joe Powers was found dead with her throat cut at her house after the horrendous post about a wheelchair woman. The crime scene looks like hell of a struggle and they found her husband slashed across the stomach and taken to the hospital. The detectives can't find any points of entry. They find a cake sent from Hater and send it immediately to the toxicologist. Karen also commands her team to do a full autopsy on the corpse. Blue suspects her husband as a culprit and Karen thinks cutting the throat is unusual. The next day, Karen finds Nick and Blue watching at CCTV and claims that no one came in or out at the time of Joe Powers' death. It means that it's just her and her husband in the house at that time. Blue continues to collect every threat or insult leveled at Joe Powers over the previous 48 hours but Karen claims that internet stuff drifts off like weather which people don't mean what they are posting. Suddenly Nick approaches them and says that the husband is already up and talking. They proceed to the hospital to get his testimony. Joe's husband says that he heard his wife screaming and when he ran into her room, he saw the woman was cutting her head and her throat with a shard of glass. He tried to stop his wife and that was when he got slashed. After that, they finally can identify the cake sender's name, Liza Bahar, who is a teacher, and decide to visit her. Apparently, Liza Bahar was one of the netizens who posted a death threat to Joe Powers with the death to hashtag. She explains that the hashtag is just a game where you insert the name of someone who's annoying. At that moment, Karen receives a report from the toxicology that the cake is clean. They give the teacher a caution for offensive communication act and then leave the school. In the office, Blue and Karen are still investigating Joe's case when suddenly Nick interrupts the conversation and mentions people on the internet are now pissed off with Tusk, who is the Grammy Award winning rapper. In a talk show, he insults a 9 years old fan who is trying to emulate his dancing and suggests the kid to stop dancing. While scrolling, Nick also finds one of the hate posts with a death to hashtag. Night arrives. Tusk walks towards his car and is offered a cigarette by one of his pals. Suddenly, he falls while screaming and holding his head like something has got into it. After being picked up by ambulance, he still can't stop screaming, thus the nurse has to sedate him. In the hospital, he is brought to a room to undergo an MRI scan. However, during the procedure, the strong magnet from the machine pulls out a small B device through his brain and eyeball, killing him instantly. The next day, Karen and Blue visit a doctor to see Joe Powers' autopsy result. The doctor explains that there is a hole, like a tiny tunnel, that goes all the way from her ear canal to deep in her brain. To be exact, the part of the brain where the hole ends is the dorsal posterior insula, which is basically the brain's pain center. Because of that, the victim will feel agony out of scale and will do anything to stop that. Surprisingly, the doctor also found a similar B device from the Tusk incident, which according to Blue, is an ADI or autonomous drone insect from the Granular Project. They immediately head to Granular Headquarters. Upon arrival, Karen explains that the whole ADI project is funded by the government. They are welcomed by Vanessa who then leads them to Rasmus, one of the higher-ups at the company. He explains that ADI was essentially created to replace near-extinct bees and is solar-powered. ADI also has a sensor which enables them to navigate and detect flowers nearby. These bee robots cover the whole UK and can reproduce by duplicating themselves and spreading out exponentially. After a short explanation about the robot, Karen shows Rasmus the ADI that caused Joe Powers' death. He explains that this B-robot is not designed to kill and has got military-grade encryption, which means that it has a very low probability of being hacked. Then he brings them to the control room where they monitor all the hive online. Blue tries to input Joe Powers' postcode and thanks to that, they are able to identify that a B-robot near the journalist house suddenly disappears from the control screen and finds out that someone has hacked the robot. When they command Rasmus to trace the culprit, he tells the detectives that it would be easier if he is not bothered by people around. So he swaps number with Blue to maintain communication later. Before they leave, Karen requests a list of granular staff that had access to the system. At the office, Karen hands over the list to Nick and asks him to root out anyone interesting. Apparently, a National Crime Agency or NCA officer, Sean Lee, approaches them as he found the same B-robot that caused the death of the rapper. 
In the middle of her investigation, Blue reveals some similarities to both victims. She links the death to a website promoting a game named Game of Consequences, where Twitter users can vote to kill a hated public figure, with the victim selected via the most votes with death to hashtag and will be eliminated after 5 p.m. every day. The game was first published by a set of duplicate bot accounts. It also seems like the number of users participating in the game is growing exponentially. After realizing how the game works, the group then tries to identify and protect the next target. It's Clara Meads, who had recently tweeted a disrespectful selfie involving a military war monument. At the moment, she has already pocketed 880 votes on her name. Before picking her up, Karen phones Clara to alert her about the situation and tells him to pack up immediately. Blue also contacts Rasmus to monitor the area around the potential victim area. With his futuristic car, the NCA agent could turn every red light between the tracks to green. The group plans to rescue Clara to a secluded safe house for a terrorist informant. Upon arrival, Rasmus tells Blue that he picked up an attempted breach and one ADI just goes offline. They successfully rescue the potential victim to the intended place. But unfortunately, a lone ADI which initially targeted her manages to follow them. Rasmus from the control room informs the group that he just loses control to all be robots. Suddenly, thousands of the ADI are approaching the safe house and trying to reach the victim. Eventually, a swarm of ADI find every unprotected opening and one ADI finally locates Clara and burrows into her brain. Clara dies in agony, while the detectives remain unharmed. After the horrendous event, the group and Rasmus meet up and they have a little conflict. Blue deduces that the B-Robots must find their targets using advanced facial recognition, which is only possible if Granular has access to government records. Blue confronts Lee and he is forced to admit that the government is currently using ADI for mass public surveillance, as this was the only incentive to back the project with the necessary funds to make it successful. The usage of death to hashtag grows rapidly after the public learns that the game kills people. The situation becomes more critical as Tom, the Chancellor of Exchequer, climbs to the top of the most hated list. In the meeting, he begs to shut down the system for one day. But, Lee argues that if they shut it down, he will still be number one, so it will make no difference. Lee proposes a plan to move the Chancellor to an underground bunker and knock out every hive and bees within a 10-mile radius. But the plan doesn't seem effective. Karen interviews a former granular employee who attempted suicide after receiving online hate, who then reveals that her flatmate, Garrett Scholes, an ex-granular employee working on ADI, saved her life. Her suspicion is confirmed when the ADI from Joe Powers' brain turns out to contain a manifesto written by Garrett. The manifesto further states that he wanted to force people to face the consequences of their actions and not be able to hide behind online anonymity. Garrett had left the country six months ago, but a selfie taken on his phone allows Blue to trace his exact location at the time. A raid on Garrett's hideout results in nothing as they are unable to catch the culprit. But Blue finds his unburned hard disk and brings it to the office. When connected to the ADI system, it downloads a list of everyone who has ever used death to hashtag. The list contains the participants' names and faces. Karen quickly works out that Garrett used hated public figures as bait. His plan was to use the ADI to kill all those on the list as the consequence of their action in social media. Blue and Rasmus try to find a way to shut down the system, but Karen thinks Garrett has led them into a trap and that the deactivate function may actually be the command to kill the targets. Against the detective's opinion, Lee triggers the system. For a brief time, it appears that Granular has regained control of the system, but ultimately Karen's theory is proven correct and the ADI are automatically sent to kill the 300,000 people who use death to hashtag. After the horrendous event, Karen explains at the hearing that Blue went missing and is presumed to have committed suicide. She is then allowed to leave, as nervously takes her place. Karen herself has become a public hate figure because of the case. At the end of the film, she receives an anonymous text from Blue, who is still alive and secretly working with the detective to track down Garrett Scholes. Blue has found him and tells Karen they have finally got him. Subscribe to watch more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.